A political storm has been brewing in the Conservative heartlands and today it hit in Chesham and Amersham, courtesy of the Liberal Democrats. Green Sarah Louise of the Liberal Democrat Party is duly elected. whose stunning by-election victory overturned a 16,000 majority in a seat that has only ever been Tory. <laughs> no wonder Lib Dem leader Ed Davey was milking it. You know what happens when a really powerful, strong orange force goes against a blue wall? Yeah. Stand back. <laughs> Let me show you. It wasn't even close. They won with an 8,000 majority, something that took even party insiders by surprise. The successful candidate, Sarah Green, was all smiles, but not much else. Apparently too tired to talk, even at her own victory rally. Her campaign was tailored to this leafy home county's constituency, where voters are worried about too many new houses being built and HS2. She's opposed to both, even though her party policy is actually in favour of the high-speed rail line. So, HS2, planning reforms, is this more of a victory for nimbyism? than the Liberal Democrats? No, not, not at all. Um, Liberal Democrats made very clear that we believe we do need more houses. We want more affordable houses and more sustainable houses in the right places. Boris Johnson's wanted to focus on the Red Wall. Um, I think now British politics has got to remember their flank, their rear flank, the Blue Wall. And it's Liberal Democrats who could defeat a lot of Conservative MPs in the next election. I mean, look at this guy, he looks a bit like... So have the Conservatives been neglecting their heartlands in favour of places like Hartlepool? This may not look like a left-behind town, but like those in the former Red Wall, some here feel taken for granted. I think the government are putting a lot of emphasis on the north, which is right, I think they need to, but also I don't think they should neglect the home counties. Boris Johnson may be um, trying to woo the northern vote, and he's just forgotten what we're about. It's a protest vote. It's a protest vote. You know, it's quite easy to do it in a by-election. It was a, certainly a disappointing result, and I want to thank Peter Fleet, who's an outstanding uh, local candidate. Uh, but uh, there were particular circumstances there, and um, we are getting on with delivering our agenda for the whole country. How worried should the Conservatives be about this result? It is the obverse of what happened in Hartlepool, where the Conservatives did extremely well in a working-class leave voting constituency. This is Remain voting middle class Southern England. It reacts to Boris Johnson and his agenda very differently. And it does mean that therefore these constituencies are relatively speaking now more vulnerable mm -hmm. than we traditionally would have expected them to be. A permanent shift or a temporary blip? What this by-election does show is that the landscape of British politics is still as changeable as ever. Well, earlier I spoke to the political sociologist Paula Surridge and the former Tory MP for the neighbouring constituency, David Gork. I began by asking if this result was a one-off or the beginnings of something more difficult for the Conservatives. I think there are local issues in play, as they usually are in by-elections, but I think there is something broader than that as, as well. Clearly planning and HS2 were important, um, but I think we are seeing the evidence that the Conservative vote in a lot of these home county prosperous places, tended to vote Remain, that Conservative vote is pretty soft. Um, and therefore, it doesn't take that much for them to move elsewhere. I don't think there's huge enthusiasm for Brexit in places like Chesham and Amersham. Uh, I don't think there's a huge enthusiasm for the Prime Minister and the style of his politics. Um, and I think that is a potential vulnerability. And just as the Conservatives have benefited from a realignment in British politics uh, in the north of England, over time, I suspect the flip side of that is that we will see the Conservatives losing more seats um, in London, the southeast of England, and other, if you like, prosperous uh, areas where there are a lot of graduates. Um, that, that section of um, the electorate is moving away from the Conservatives. Paula Surridge, what do you make of that analysis? 
I think that analysis is broadly correct, but I would add to it that we have to ask the question, why didn't this happen at the 2019 election? Why is it happening now? Um, and I, I think there's two factors that have changed significantly that might help these voters move across now when they didn't before. The first is that we're, we've, we've now left the European Union. The, the danger, if you like, of a second referendum and more uncertainty around Brexit has been removed. The second thing about these voters were that they were they, they really strongly disliked Corbyn and were quite fearful of Corbyn's Labour. And so a different Labour leader also allows them to feel a bit more comfortable moving away from the Conservatives. Obviously, a large Conservative majority helps that a little bit as well. But, I mean, you talk about Labour, it was a disaster for Labour. Well, that, I think that really depends how you read it. If you read it as a tactical vote in a place that Labour can't possibly win, I don't think it is a disaster for Labour. In fact, I think it could be read as quite good news for Labour because it shows actually that that problem of getting people to switch between the parties that they had in 2019 might be removed. And of course, David Gork, you know, many people will regard this as a victory for NIMBYs, you know, people who just don't want much... Um, building and HS2 going through the beautiful, rather posh countryside that they live in, the Conservatives can't be seen to be giving in to people because this often on this issue because it often means fewer houses and that's something we desperately need. Well, the political worry in the Conservative Party um, is that most Conservatives tend to think that you know, if people own their own homes, they're more likely to vote Conservative, but younger people can't own their own homes because it's too expensive. So the solution is you build more homes, um, but as you build more homes, you upset the existing Conservative voters. So I think they consider themselves to be in a bit of a bind. As, as I say, I think they've, they've got to make this a more attractive offer to existing residents in areas where they're gonna see developments. Um, but that, that is the bind that the Conservative Party is in on this. Paula Surridge and David Gork, thanks very much for talking to us today.